from a deadly island where humans fear to tread to an island where penguins rule, let's visit these places where only animals live. Snake Island Brazil is known for its fantastic beaches and majestic islands, but no matter how alluring it can be, there's one island that is definitely not worth a visit. I'm talking about the famous, or rather infamous, mispronunciated Ija de Camida Grande, better known to the rest of the world as Snake Island. This small island has an area of only 106 hectares and has a terrain of bare rock that suddenly transitions into a lush rainforest. This dense jungle is the hiding place for the reasons why no human has called this place home. At least not since the 1920s, and there's 4,000 reasons for that. Snake Island is the exclusive home of Bothrops insularis, more commonly known as the Golden Lancehead Viper. The snake is one of the most dangerous and deadly in the world and packs a venom so potent that one bite can kill a fully grown man in under an hour. Legend has it that the island was once snake-free until pirates introduced him to the island as protectors of buried treasure. But as with most myths, the real story isn't as wild. What really happened was the snakes were trapped there when Snake Island separated from the mainland due to rising sea levels. The serpents then obliterated all of their fauna trapped on the island until only the snakes remained. The snakes have since evolved to hunt birds, the only other animals that call the island home today. People did used to live on the island, but authorities built a lighthouse there in 1909. It was abandoned in 1920 when, as the story goes, the snakes killed the lighthouse keeper and his entire family. Today, only a few people, mostly researchers and scientists, are allowed to set foot on the island. The Brazilian government has prohibited all other people from visiting, which is a good thing if you ask me personally. Monkey Island You can find monkeys in many Caribbean islands. In fact, you can probably find a few in all of them. However, Cayo Santiago is a bit different. This island is Monkey Central, home to around a thousand Riazas macaques. No humans call this island home, making it an exclusive beachfront property for the monkeys. Ironically enough, there were actually no monkeys on the island until 1938. Clarence R. Carpenter, a primatologist for the School of Tropical Medicine, brought them there from India. He envisioned a place where these monkeys could roam around and go about their business freely without any human intervention. This allowed Carpenter to observe the monkeys, giving him valuable insight into their behavior. The research conducted on the island has also been key to further understanding primate social structure as well as aspects of primate biology that are significant to understanding human health and diseases. Monkeys of Cayo Santiago serve that same purpose to this day. This also allows researchers at the Caribbean Primate Research Center to make outstanding discoveries in many areas of scientific research. Christmas Island No, there's no Santa here. Christmas Island, a tiny Australian territory around 1,615 miles from Perth, has a small human population of a little under 2,000. But why is it on this video, then? Well, that's because the number is insignificant compared to the vast number of red crabs that call this island home. A 2021 survey resulted in a mind-blowing number. There is about 190 million of these red crustaceans all over the island. So, for every person on the island, there's over 100,000 crabs. That doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will, and because of these crabs, one epic event happens on the island once a year that the residents find to be quite a nuisance, but have no choice but to learn to live with it. Every single year in October or November, depending on when the first rainfall of the wet season falls, millions of these crabs embark on an epic journey to the sea. They traverse hundreds of miles so that they can lay their eggs, adding a few million more to their already staggering population. Just last year, 35 million female crabs joined in this mass migration, and each of them laid around 70,000 eggs. Now, that's a very conservative estimate. It's conceivable that there were more, and these migrations are so massive that they stop traffic, disrupting the daily lives of the island's residents. Recently, the accidental introduction of yellow ants have also become the bane of the crabs. It's estimated that 10 to 15 million crabs have been killed by this invasive species. But even so, they don't seem to have stopped the steady rise in red crab populations. Rat Island Howadox Island, part of the western Aleutian Islands in Alaska, is currently home to a rather healthy population of shorebirds. Although people regularly visit, there's no permanent human population on the island, probably because of how remote it is. But just a few years ago, the fauna on the island was radically different. It was completely overrun with rats. In fact, the island was only named Hawadox in 2012, and before that time, it was called Rat Island. These rodents, brown rats to be specific, wreaked havoc on the local shorebird population, eating their eggs and almost driving them to extinction. They arrived on the island in 1780 when they hitched a ride on a Japanese ship, which subsequently was wrecked there. Rats being rats, they quickly acclimated to their new island home and flourished, much to the detriment of local indigenous fauna. 
Although no one knew how many rats lived on the island at their peak, it was enough to drive native animals close to extinction. Not satisfied with their 10 square mile piece of real estate, the rats soon spread and established colonies in nearby islands as well. However, in 2008, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decided that enough was enough and hatched a plan to get rid of all the rats on the island. It took them two long years, but they finally declared Howadox rat-free in 2009. First time in 229 years. Duerker Island Coming in at just under an acre, Duerker Island is the smallest in today's list. It's so small that no one in their right mind would live there, that is unless you're one of the thousands of Cape Fair seals that call this bear hunk of rock home. Also called Seal Island, not to be confused with another island of the same name, which just so happened to be close by, Duerker Island is home to 20 marine bird species, which include the common cormorant and the kelp gull. However, seals far outnumber any other animal there. At any given time, you'll be able to find 10,000 seals there, either lazily lounging on rocks or swimming in the water just off the rocky shoreline. Cape fur seals are the largest of all fur seals, so you can imagine how crowded the island is. They're also the island's main draw, attracting tourists from all over the world. These visitors have to watch the seals from the safety of their boats, though, as no one is allowed to set foot on the island, as these seals are known to be territorial and don't take kindly to visitors. The island is in Hoff Bay near Cape Town, and I know what you're thinking. Surely the water around the island is prime hunting ground for sharks, especially the Great White, am I right? Well, actually, no. The water here is actually too cold for sharks, and diving is relatively safer when compared to other South African dive sites. In fact, tourists can find tour companies that offer dive tours near Duiker Island, allowing tourists to interact with some seals underwater, albeit with extreme caution. Puffin Island If you see a puffin, it's hard not to fall in love with it. They're beautiful birds sporting brightly colored beaks and black and white plumage. They also have this clumsy, wobbling walk that is nothing short of endearing. Just seeing a few of these birds is enough for most people, but if you want to be overwhelmed by sheer numbers, I suggest you go visit Puffin Island. The island, located in Iceland, is actually home to 60% of the world's Atlantic puffin population. From June to November, around 6 million of these birds congregate here. Puffins are amazing creatures. They mate with the same partner for life, take care of their chicks as a couple, and have clear social bonds within the colony. They spend most of their adult lives floating on the ocean, only coming to land to breed, lay eggs, and raise their young. After that, back to the sea they go. Here's another amazing fact though, puffins actually go to the same place every year to breed. It's also the same place where the birds were born. Malpeo Island When visiting Colombia, drivers never fail to visit Malpeo Island. It's the country's premier diving spot and is home to many fascinating sea creatures. The island is uninhabited except for a contingent of Colombian armed forces who patrol the area. The island also hosts a variety of animals such as the Nazca and masked boobies, swallow-tailed gulls, and the Galapagos petrel, a critically endangered bird species. But you don't visit Malpeo for the birds, you go there for the sharks. The waters surrounding the island are teeming with them. From silky sharks to massive whale sharks, you can find them all here. Eagle rays, sailfish, and tuna also frequent these waters. No wonder it's been called a diver's paradise. However, what makes this place so special is its population of hammerhead sharks. These unique creatures can be found swimming around the island all year round. But from January to May, hundreds of them can be seen. In fact, the island's steep walls and underwater caves can support more than 200 hammerheads. Scientists are not sure why these sharks congregate here in such great numbers, and it's unknown if it's a hammerhead breeding ground, but the prevailing theory is that these sharks are drawn to the region's cold upswellings. But no matter the reason, these mass gatherings never fail to attract thousands of divers each year. South Georgia Island If penguins had human intelligence, they would have probably already established their own independent country, especially in this part of the world. I mean, they clearly have the numbers for it to happen. Located in the South Atlantic, some 870 miles from the Falkland Islands, is the barren, mountainous, and unforgiving terrain of South Georgia Island. This place isn't forgiving to us weak humans, but is perfect for penguins. This place is home to many penguin colonies, and according to the latest census, the island houses 100,000 pairs of Gentoo penguins, around 6,000 chinstrap penguins, and 450,000 pairs of king penguins. They're not even the largest colony here, though. South Georgia Island is also home to millions of macaroni penguins. Just imagine how unbearably noisy that place is. However, the stars of the show here are the king penguins. These slightly smaller cousins of the emperor penguin were hunted and killed in great numbers from the 19th all the way to the 20th century for their oil. 
Obviously, they've since made a comeback, and aside from the cessation of hunting activities, scientists don't know why the king penguin population exploded. Some studies indicate rising sea temperatures significantly contribute to the increase, but that hypothesis remains inconclusive. For now, let's celebrate the rare instance that we're talking about the comeback of a species and not the opposite. See you all next time!